Hello. So what we're going to do here is revolve practice number one. So revolve is the second <coughs> uh, basic modeling tool that we, we're going to cover. Uh, you've already uh, done quite a bit with uh, extrude. And this is the next thing. This is revolve. And this is the object that I'm going to uh, model for you. So again, either uh, have the drawing open uh, on your desk a paper copy or or have it uh, available through uh, d2l so what we've got here again we're going to look up in this top corner and it's telling us that this is made in mmgs so this is a metric part a decimal place is two and the material here is brass so this is a brass material all right and this is uh, one of the tower parts you've already done the uh, tower base uh, as an extrude exercise and this is the spire so uh, that's uh, as far as we've got so what I'm going to do is just go to um, SolidWorks I'm going to open a new part and I know I'm fortunate in uh, in the way mine my uh, SolidWorks is set up it defaults to MMGS and I also know that it defaults to two decimal places so that's good so if you look at your object, uh, your drawing, I, I'm sorry, if you look at your drawing, you can see that basically what we've got there is a section of the front view and then a top view. OK, we've got a section of the front view and then a top view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open um, a sketch, a new sketch on the front plane. And what I do, uh, because I, I'm uh, quite forgetful, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a center line type. And if you look at the origin, the origin is way at the bottom of our of our part. So what I'm going to do is just start and pull up and it snaps vertically. Look like that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a dimension on this, which is the overall height of my object, which is 64 millimeters. OK. So far, so good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little demo first, and then I'm going to show you how I would model this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the corner rectangle tool. I'm just going to start it here. And I'm just going to pull it out like this. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, hold down control, and click on the origin and I want to make those coincident with each other and what that means in this context is sharing the same plane and I'm going to do the same thing at the top hold down control and hit the top of the end of the line and I'll make those again coincident so now what I've got is my rectangle is the same uh, height as the line uh, which is what I want okay so what I can do now is I do a couple of things. I can dimension this. Now, if I dimension this here, which I'm going to do, let's make it, uh, I don't know, it looks like it wants to be seven millimeters. OK. Now let me do the outside, same idea. Maybe that wants to be 15, I don't know. I'm just making this up. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit features and then revolve boss base. So again, I'm making um, material, hence the boss base. OK, and I've also got uh, revolve cut, which is greyed out right now. But of course, that remo removes material in a, in a revolve. Now. I'm going to use this here as the center line or the axis uh, when it becomes a 3D object. So if that's seven millimeters, what will the hole be in the middle? OK, it'll be 14 millimeters. And my outside from the center line to the outside is 15 millimeters in this case. If I revolve that 360 degrees, it's going to be 30 outside diameter this is really important to remember if you end up with an object which looks completely out of scale with the sketch that you've got 
on the drawing, chances are that you haven't understood that. Also, of course, if I reduce that seven to zero, then I won't have a hole in the middle. I'll create a disc. Okay, you understand that. So think about that. Revolve, uh, and I'm going to hit Revolve Boss Base. If I've got a center line there, it already typically it picks it up. If not, I just click into the axis of revolution uh, box there and just select the line that I'm interested in. This is probably something you'd need to do if you've got more than one center line in your sketch. And then what I can do is it defaults to revolve in 360 degrees. So I'm going to say OK. And there it is. So I've got a, a sort of a thick walled tube. OK. So that's that's good. But perhaps I don't want it to be 360 degrees. So I can right click and edit feature. And I can say, no, I don't want it to be that. I want it to be 180 degrees. And now when I say OK, you can see that I've got half. Or I can say I want it to be 270 degrees, which will be three quarters and so on and so forth. And of course, I can actually make it any particular value that I want. You can see that I'm I'm uh, going incrementally with this guy uh, as I as I just use the spin box. Yeah. OK, I actually do want it to be 360. So I'm going to say OK and I'm going to say OK. All right. Now, if my dimensions were correct, which they're actually not, but if they were correct, I could create this uh, this uh, Revolve Practice 1, the Tower Spire, by cutting away material. So I could sort of just cut away material until I've got the shape that I want. You can do that. It works absolutely fine. But I'm going to show you the, the way to do it, uh, which I think is easier and more straightforward um, in a minute. But I just want to show you the other things that I can do. My front planar claw, of course, goes straight through the center of this guy and I can open a new sketch on it, go normal to, and now I can use a rectangle or, or anything else that I want, actually. Uh, I'm going to have to put in that center line. As I say, you need a new center line for each sketch that you want to do a revolve. So I've got that and I can just dimension this, you know, to, to be whatever I want it to be. And how high do I want it to be? Like this. And then I can dimension this to there. And that works fine. I'm going to, let's call that nine then. And I've got a fully defined sketch as you can see. And now what I can do is I can do features, revolve cut. It defaults to 360 degrees. Oh, didn't need to do, didn't mean to do that. So I want that to be 360. Okay, I just want to say okay. And there I've got a cut in this thing. Maybe I want to put a cut in the internal um, surface. So what I can do is let's go to that uh, front plane again. Open a new sketch. OK, go normal too. Now, it is in here. That edge is here, but it's difficult to see. So what I can do is I can go to the display style. And I can go like that. And now what I can do is now I can put maybe a, a, um, an O-ring groove or something in here. Uh, and I need to again to put that uh, center line in there. Oh, I don't want a, a solid line. I want a center line. And again, just like that. And again, I could spend some time. I should spend some time fully defining, but it's just a demo. So what I'm going to do now is go features, revolve cut. It defaults to 360 degrees. And I say, yes, please. And now I can change my display back to shaded with edges, which is typically what we use. And there you can see just in there, we've got that 
we've got the, the cut. OK, so that's the basic technique. It's very similar in the way it operates to uh, the way extrude uh, works. But instead of extruding outwards from a, um, a sketch uh, a particular distance, what you've seen here now is I still use a sketch and I use a center line and it's an angular value. It's an angular value. All right. So, uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is let's get rid of, uh, I want to delete these bits. Yes, delete all of that. And it just leaves me with this with this sketch and I'm going to uh, edit this sketch, get back into that guy. I'm going to go normal two, and I'm actually just going to get rid of all of this so I can just draw a, a box around it and I hit delete. And I say, yes, I do want to get rid of that as well. And I've left with my center line, which is the correct height. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the easy way. You could make the basic tube and then cut away, cut away, cut away to leave the value, the, the, you know, the material that you're interested in. But what I'm actually going to do is just to do uh, a simple, straightforward sketch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here and I'm going to go down just like this. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to go out and I'm going to come up. And it goes out a bit like this and up a bit like that. And then back like this. And it comes up to here somewhere. And it goes off at a bit of an angle. And then it goes across to there. So what you can see here now, what you can see here that I've got, although it's not very pretty, I've got that sort of basic shape. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, I'm going to fully dimension it. Before I do that, I want to make sure that this and that are coincident again. So they should now be black. Look, the, the top's black and the bottom's black. And what I'm going to do is start to dimension. And I can do my tubes. So what I've got here is I can click this and this. And what it shows me is this is a radial value. It's a value of the radius. But if you look on the drawing there, you can see the diameter of that small hole that goes all the way through there is actually three millimeters. So just where this is as, uh, as uh, gone to, it would give me a hole twice as large as I want. But what I can do in SOLIDWORKS, if I move across the center line, look, it goes from being a radius to a diameter. So now I click that guy. Now if I make it three, you see it's a three diameter. Okay, this guy here, is a five diameter. All right, so far so good. So what do I want to do? So I can also make this guy here, click it again. Just to hit escape. And I want that there to be 35. This is what uh, Chris would call catty wampus. So you can see this is the wrong way around now. So all I need to do is just move that guy so it's correct. So far, so good. I'm going to come back to that. You know what? Why don't I just do it now? I can hit the dimension. So I want to go U to U. No, I don't want that. U to U. When I click on two on two lines like that, it gives me an angle between them. Click to drop that guy, and I want it to be 59 degrees. If you're not, if you're wondering, well, why is it 59 degrees? Because our typical drill point, and that's all this is, is 118 degrees included angle. So that's why that is what it is. So far, so good. So let's continue. So this bottom diameter here. is again it's a diameter 
and it's 12.97. Okay, that's that one. And then the diameter of this guy is 15. All right, don't worry that this is the wrong way. So the diameter of this guy here is 7.97. And you can find all this, of course, on your drawing. All right. So that's gone a bit cattywampus. This here needs to go in there a little bit. All right. So what do we need? So we need an angle. And we need a, let's do a length first. So this guy from there to there is 12. And then the angle from there to there is five. Okay, so that's good. So the blue bits, we just got some heights here. So this here is three. Okay. And the height from the bottom there to there is 12. And everything now should be fully defined. OK, so now all I have to do is to go to features, revolve boss base. It's found the center line. It looks good. And I say, OK. Uh, you remember before you think, oh, Lindell's made a huge mistake. Uh, he forgot to put this fillet in the sketch and I didn't. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in as a feature fillet. And the radius I'm interested in is three. And I'm going to give it right in this corner. Look there. And I'm going to say, OK. Now, if you would drawn this in the sketch, the chances are that you would assume that that fillet comes all the way out to this corner and your values when you look at mass, uh, volume and center of mass would have been slightly wrong. And the reality is it doesn't look. And if you look at your sketch, if you look at the top view there, that's where the 15 diameter, three diameter, 7.97 diameter. If you look, there's two rings uh, close together in that top view and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this guy and now look these are the top these are the two rings that you can see in your in your drawing there as I say if you sketch these uh, in the sketch chances are you would have assumed it came right to the corner uh, what have I got are there any chamfers anywhere I don't think so I think we're good uh, let me just again show you where the origin is. Hide show origins. And there it is at the bottom in the center. Perfect. Only one thing left to do. I need to change the material to brass. So I close that and I'm looking at copper alloys. It's a copper alloy. Brass. Apply. And now you'll see it's a different color. All right. And there it is. That's my uh, revolve practice number one.